I'm going to try and not slobber all over this review, but it's going to be hard because this next game is one of my personal favorites in all of horror game history. With no surprises after the success of the first Silent Hill, Konami utilized the power of the PlayStation 2 and brought us Silent Hill 2 in 2001. Being a sequel to a new horror game series can come with its own challenges, but Silent Hill 2 slowly became the best in the series and brought in many new fans to the town of Silent Hill. Silent Hill 2 begins by introducing the main character, James Sutherland, who arrives in Silent Hill after receiving a letter from his dead wife. This throws the suspicion right into the player's hands and you immediately know that things are not going to go well. Silent Hill 2 has a weird ability to draw you into the unknown. Be it searching for a loved one, trying to uncover a mystery, or just flat out curiosity. What it does so well is from the moment you start the game, you are sympathizing with James, and you want to know what is up with this letter, and how could your wife have possibly written it if she's been dead for three years. I can't go into the plot without giving away many spoilers, so I will leave it at that as I truly believe Silent Hill 2 is one of the best narratives to date. It takes into account powerful subjects such as suicide, murder, rape, and all throughout the game it will question your reality. While you are simply playing a game, it draws you in so much that you feel like you are actually there in the town of Silent Hill, and I have found this to be a rarity in video games as a whole. The supporting cast of characters is also very believable. Enough for you to run around the town trying to track them down and find out what their story is. Some of them help you, some of them may hurt you. You can't be certain because Silent Hill 2 constantly flips the story on your head and it is up to you to pick up the pieces. Compared to the first game and horror games in general, Silent Hill 2 offers more of an atmospheric and psychological roller coaster than anything I've played. From the deep thematic references to the perfectly constructed environments, the game caused me to overanalyze the shit out of it until I started reading books and watching movies that had the slightest relation to the game. Never have I been so enthralled in a story that I had no idea what was going on and who was what and what was who. It leaves you in suspense, so much so that it is very difficult to put the controller down. That brings me to my counterpoint, in that despite being more of a psychological horror than a scare tactics game, the game is downright freaky. The sound alone was enough for me to pass the dual shock to my friend in hopes that he would take care of whatever was around the corner. If I was lucky, he was the one who had to run away from the game's ultimate bad guy, Pyramid Head. Pyramid Head makes his debut and is one of the most iconic stalker characters in a horror game that I've ever witnessed. The sound of him scraping his giant knife across the floor, or the fact that you can constantly hear him moaning behind his giant mask, will give anyone the chills. Unable to destroy or even put up a fair fight, all you can do is run from this menace and hope that he doesn't catch up to you. Your heart will pound when he is around, and it will explode at the tension he causes just by making noises throughout the building you're in. This leads to the amazing sound in Silent Hill 2, that the dynamic music and sound effects give the town a very grim feel, and honestly, most of the horror comes from the sounds I heard throughout the game. It could be as simple as an incessant bang that you constantly hear throughout the hospital, or the slow crawl and moan of a mannequin tracking you through a hallway. Silent Hill 2 makes you feel like you are there, and the sound it is what solidifies this illusion into your brain. Silent Hill 2 uses the same third-person perspective as the first game and relies on darkness and fog to give you a difficult time seeing what is around you. Again, the game does not rely heavily on combat and doesn't give you many weapons to use, I think six in total. But this is no detriment to it as the puzzles and riddles are the bread and butter of the series. Konami has also included the option to change the difficulty of the combat and the riddles independently so you can customize the game depending on your playstyle. As much as I complain about the combat and how it isn't that great, I would not hold this against the game because it does add to the fact that you are a helpless human in a town full of demons. So why is Silent Hill 2 on the list? If you haven't realized already, I really love this game, but honestly, it has it all. From the story, to the characters, all the way down to the flawless sound. Some people may argue, why even play this game? Why not just watch it as a long cutscene? 
This wouldn't do it justice, because you're a part of the story once you pick up that controller, and Silent Hill 2 entangles you in his web of horror. You will want to press on in hopes of unlocking the secrets of the town, but this game delves into your subconscious and is mentally draining that you'll have to take a break. Trust me on that one. Any fan of the horror genre deserves to play and experience this game, because it is certainly a masterpiece that may not be outdone for a long time. We'll just have to wait and see.